Hello, Gary Parker here. I'm going to take a look at a confidence interval for a proportion problem. So let's get started. This one is about uh, presidential approval ratings. So uh, we're assuming that a sample, oops, a good sample is used to estimate the uh, US president's job approval rating. And there's a link to some information on that if you want to check out more. And we want to calculate the margin of error and EBP stands for error bound on the proportion. We have a sample size of 1,310 people were asked what their approval is for the president's uh, job and 58% of people said they approve. And that's what the P prime represents here. Uh, and we want to use that to calculate the margin of error. So just a few notes on this here. Into my notebook, here we go. So in order to run a stat key simulation on this, we need to know exactly how many people said they approve of the president's uh, current job performance. So details that are important, P prime is the sample proportion. We are trying to use P prime to approximate what we call P, which is the population proportion. And all a proportion is, is a fraction. To get that fraction from a sample, you needed a value we usually label X and another one we call N. And N, X is what we call the favorable responses. And N is total. In this case, we were given that the P prime is 58%, which would be 0.58 as a decimal. We don't know the total number of people that said, yes, I approve, but we do know 1,310 were asked. So we can just multiply to get X. So if we take that 58% and we multiply by the sample size, 1,310, that will tell us about how many people actually said, yep, good job. Calculator for that. So we need to take 58% of 1,310. And uh, again, we always have rounding going on when we go either way, calculating the percent or, or going backwards. So the, the, that percent must have been a rounding. Uh, and so we all probably have to round this up. So we would say uh, 180. So that's gonna be to the nearest person. And these are people, so you can't have a fraction of a person. So this turns out X is about 180 people. So just to double check, if we take 180 and divide by 1310, we should get about 58%. So 180 divided by 1310, it's always good to double check yourself, it's about 58%. Okay, so uh, we want the confidence interval. So once we break down the actual number of people, so again, just a reminder, since P prime is always favorable over total, we can always multiply the total over. So that means the number of people who said yes uh, is always the proportion of the total number of people sampled. And that's what we just calculated. And that's what stat key needs. And stat key calls this number right here the count. How many people did you count that had a favorable response? So then we gotta get our butts over to stat key. If you don't already have it bookmarked, you should, otherwise search for it. And then we are doing a bootstrap confidence interval. And we're doing a proportion in this case, not a mean. So you gotta keep that straight. And in a proportion, you just wanna go edit their data and tell them what your count is. Mine was 180 and my sample size was 1,310. And okay, and then I did something wrong that says the proportion is 13. Cool. Okay, I've got a mistake somewhere. Oh, I totally screwed that up. Wow. All right, try that again. So let's see, if we take 58% of 1,310, I must have mistyped the number, we get up ah, 760. I should have caught that earlier. Error. 
So wrong, 760. So let's double check. So I, and that's interesting. I mistyped it again when I was checking it. Clear. So if we take 760 divided by 1,310, we get our 58%. Okay, that looks better. So again, when you type in your numbers, make sure that proportion checks out. Double check, double check, double check. So what was that, 760? Yep. And there's the 58%, okay, that looks better. So then what we do is we start regenerating samples. So if I did one sample, then StatKey basically makes a deck of cards that has 130, 1,310 cards in it, 760 say yes, the others say no. It shuffles the deck and redraws and looks and puts the card back in another 1,310 times. So based on that deck of, kind, deck of cards and a random shuffling and drawing, this time 757 people said yes. And we can just keep doing that one sample at a time. So right now I have five different samples. Each of these samples is 1,310 people, uh, but each time is a slightly different number of people that said yes. But since it's based on the original sample, it shouldn't be too far away. Uh, and to do a, a, a distribution of proportions, you have to generate thousands and thousands of new samples. And this is called bootstrapping the data. And you want at least 6,000. So I have at least 7,000, so that should be good enough. And sometimes these look a little bit weird, but you have this rough bell-shaped curve going on here, which is what happens most of the time. So the mean of the sampling distribution should be close to the proportion. And here they match pretty much exactly. Uh, and what I wanna do is I wanna figure out the, the average spread so that I have usually 95% in the middle. So then we click two tail. So if I were looking for a 95% confidence interval, then I would say the job approval rating is somewhere between 55.4% and 60.6%. To calculate the margin of error, I would find the distance between these two numbers and then divide by two. And that's the distance roughly from the center to the edge. Uh, when you do a, a randomization to make a confidence interval, uh, you don't get perfect symmetry. So the distance from the middle to the right is not gonna perfectly match the distance from the middle to the left, although it looks like this one does. So we have to do a little arithmetic on that to get the margin of error, which means to subtract these two numbers and divide by two. So let's see if I can get that right. Calculator, parentheses, 0 0.606 minus uh, 0 point, was it 554? Yeah. Parentheses divide by two. And so here's my calculation, 0 0.606 minus 0 0.554 divided by two. So you're gonna do the subtraction and then divide by two. So the parentheses is important unless you use two steps. And I get a margin of error about 2.6% um, if I'm using the right confidence level. So this said use a 90% confidence level. So we get to do it again. Uh, but I do wanna make a note of this just for fun. So Go back, let's make a copy of this and compare it to a 95% confidence interval to see how the confidence level matters or not. F2, let's go new page, and let's shrink that down. So for this particular graph right here, let's just make a note that we found that the error bound on the proportion was 0 0.0, is it 26? which could also be written as 2.6%, right? So, so that means our interval could either be written as 0 0.554 comma 0 0.606, or we could just say the middle is 58% plus or minus that margin of error, 0 0.026. So there's a couple of different ways we can state it, left and right, lower and upper, or center and spread when we write that down. Let's do a 90% confidence interval to see how it differs. So back to stack key, all I do is click on the 95% and enter 0.9 for 90%, and I get a different interval. So let's copy that and do the arithmetic on it to get the error. Oops, I'm gonna do this page. 
size them to match here. How's that? Almost the same size. Close enough. All right, so notice that the, the, the graph is the same on each one, but we here, we chose to put 90% of the samples in the middle here, we should put 95 in the middle. If you put 95 in the middle, you get a wider interval than if you put only 90 in the middle. So we get a different interval here. So this top one was for a confidence level of 95%. And down here, we're gonna do a confidence level of 90%. Um, and so we have to do this subtraction. So let's see, 602558 calculator. So parentheses 0 0.602 minus 0 0.55, oops, 558. I kept those right. 602558. Yep. So find the distance between them and then divide by two. Cut it in half. That gives you the margin of error. So this time the margin is a little narrower, 2.2%. So here we get an error bound on the proportion of 0 0.022, which could also be said to be 2.2%. So as far as the interval goes, for the 90% confidence interval, the interval is narrower. It's 55.8% uh, up to, 60.2% or we could say it's about 50% 58% plus or minus that 2.2%. So center and spread versus lower and upper for the confidence interval. So this is the confidence level, this is the margin of error, this is the confidence interval and here's another version of the confidence interval. Two ways to reference that and, and your homework problem goes over each of these things here. So if you lower your confidence, you get a narrower window, but you have lower confidence, right? Who's, who wants to have lower confidence? We want to have higher confidence. Unfortunately, the, the more confident you are, that means you have a larger margin of error, which some people might not like. So this, it's a balancing act. The other variable we'll throw in later is how the sample size affects these. And we'll look at that another time. So in this case, let's see, the answer should be obtained without any preliminary rounding. We don't have to worry about that. Answer to one-tenth of one percent. Notice the percent out there. So this would be 2.2% for the 90% confidence interval. Hooray. So if you watch this video to get it right, then try a similar question. You get a slightly different set of numbers. Uh, good luck. Do good math. See you later.